You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting The Coffee Hour, helping us tell these great stories of uh, how God has provided for his, uh, for his people. And uh, today, as we share more missionary stories with you, excited to share those with you as well. So thanks, Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about them at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Uncommon. Joining us today, the Reverend David Warner. He and his wife, Shelley, served the Lord with the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod in Spain. Pastor Warner, thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. Thanks for having me. Pastor Warner, tell us about uh, the work that the Lord has given you and Shelley to serve in Spain and uh, your service as uh, your work as a church planner there. Well, we've been here on the ground in Spain for five years and working with Spanish Evangelical Lutheran Church, um, working to grow the congregations we that were already in existence and also develop the the pastorate and uh, do a lot of formation work with uh, men who want to be pastors here. And so um, that's the, the heart of the work. Um, and the Lord has blessed that in terms of uh, we've gone from when I arrived in 2015, it was myself and one Spanish pastor who's bivocational and, and serves the church on a voluntary basis. And today we have um, three full-time missionary pastors and three Spanish pastors. Uh, we have, this three congregations and three preaching stations and we're seeing steady uh growth in in membership and so uh the work that's in front of us is is just to continue building up the strength of the church and and start to uh uh expand as as we just seek to share the the pure gospel that uh spain missed out on in terms of the reformation so 500 500 years late but uh getting their opportunity to hear pure lutheran teaching today Sure. Tell us uh, about the work, uh, the, the, the daily work, uh, how you go about preaching to all these people. You don't have that many pastors uh, for, for the amount of people that are in Spain uh, to, to cover this, this wide, uh, this broad area of people. Tell us about um, how you've been able to do the word and sacrament ministry and, and also then how that's been uh, affected by what's happening in the world today with this pandemic. Sure. So Spain is about the size of California, both in population and in, in area. And so obviously uh, one pastor, two pastors, six pastors isn't, isn't nearly enough um, to cover that. Uh, we are also, we have the three congregations um, in Madrid and Cartagena and Seville, but we also have members, uh, we have members who live in 24 different cities in Spain. So we do a lot of traveling. Um, for example, when I travel, say I go to Madrid for a weekend to serve there, um, I might add days before or after my trip and, and make trips out from Madrid to visit members who are within striking distance from Madrid. Um, and so we have pastors that do a lot of traveling. And then, of course, we use uh, the Internet as much as we can. Uh, we uh, share our services on Facebook as well as uh, utilizing uh, the Zoom platform to, to share our services catechesis that way obviously we want to do as much stuff in person as we can but we simply can't and so a lot of times like with new members uh, we make the trip to get to know the person and start the process face to face but then we continue the catechesis uh, over the internet and that really set us up well uh, we went into lockdown on Fe on March 14th um, our last in-person services were on March 8th uh, and so we just ramped up a little bit more what we were already doing uh, sharing our services via facebook and, and via the zoom platform um, plus we use uh, whatsapp messaging uh, we have whatsapp groups in all of our congregations and and we, we share devotions there both audio and and print devotions that we can send out that way um, and then checking in calling um, sending messages calling making sure that we're, we're not forgetting anybody and uh, trying to encourage the people uh, with the promises that we have in Christ, even in the midst of, of this very, uh, very uncomfortable and difficult and in some situations, very frightening uh, world that we live in right now. 
So using social media and technology to to support the the ministry that you've been given there is nothing new to you. So what advice do you have to share with the rest of us if this is something you've been using for a little while in in your ministry and and certainly in outreach as well? What uh, advice or what experiences can you share with us, the the rest of us, who maybe have been using social media but not specifically for the sake of the, the gospel in this way? Well, I think one thing that um, we have learned is that uh, maybe there's a tendency on the part of uh, teachers and preachers to uh, shy away a little bit from the Lord's Supper in our teaching and preaching when not everyone can enjoy that. But we found that the the right path to be just the opposite. Um, I probably focus more on speaking about the the value and the mystery of the Lord's Supper. when I'm doing things exclusively over the internet than otherwise, because uh, that is irreplaceable. We will get back to, to the, to the Lord's supper uh, when the Lord wills. Um, but we want to make sure that the people understand that um, while the internet is a blessing and we can receive the word and people can come to faith, however, the spirit wants to use his word. Uh, the church is a congregation and we want to gather together and, and we want to stress that uh, because we wouldn't want to give the impression that, that, uh, the Lord's Supper or gathering together isn't important. And I think our people understand that very well. Um, And I I don't think that's going to be a problem, but I think it's an important thing that people do. And then maybe one other thing is uh, just have to dive in. Um, It's somewhat embarrassing the first time you do something on Facebook or the first time you do something on Zoom. (laughs) You almost certainly do it badly. And, uh, (laughs) but you're doing it. People appreciate it. You're doing it mostly for your own members but you also realize that there are other eyes and, and other ears that are that are dropping in. And so it is both uh, service to the body of Christ as it as it exists today, but it's also an evangelistic effort all the time. And and while you want to get better and better, we're certainly getting better as this is all we're doing right now. Uh, it's not the quality of the, the technical side that is of first importance. I think it's very important, but it's not the first importance. The first importance is that we're being clear with uh, – with the teaching and the preaching that, that the Lord has sent us here to, to provide. Thanks be to God that you're, that you're still able to do this and, and to, uh, to share the gospel of Christ with, uh, with the congregation. How, how are the congregation members doing? How are, how are, how is everyone holding up in the, in the midst of this lockdown? Well, we've had one um, of our pastors and his wife, uh, they live in Valencia, one of our Spanish pastors and uh, his wife, did uh, contract the virus and was hospitalized for about five days. Uh, we suspect that Jose Luis also contracted the virus, but he wasn't sick enough to get a test. And so um, we'll find that out someday. I'm sure they'll do a test to see if he had it. Uh, and one other member probably, uh, but again, it's improving here as it is in the United States, but early on, um, unless you were really sick, you didn't get a test. They just told you to take care of yourself and isolate yourself. And, and so, that's the only members um, that have been touched by the virus directly. Um, aside from that, uh, I, I would say people are doing pretty well. Um, a lot of a lot of messages, a lot of contact going back and forth, good attendance um, on our uh, various offerings, worship and Bible studies. And, and uh, so I think fairly well. It is uh, distressing. Some people are, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more isolated and a little bit harder to get a hold of and, and you start to worry. But in general, um, we're really drawing together in the midst of all of this. Um, just saw a message today. We don't have any services or any studies planned for today. And we have a, a new member. He's actually a, a catechumenal. I was at, uh, he's, at, he's, in, he's in catechesis in uh, Madrid. And he was on the group today. He's like, so when are we getting together today? Uh, so people looking for um, the contact that we can have. Help us understand the, the the culture and life in uh, the communities where you serve, and how this has uh, how the pandemic has had an impact on the the culture and the, the local community as well. Sure, the Spanish uh, are a very um, a very warm and and very much. Uh, go out people. They're actually very private and quiet um, in their homes and they don't uh, 
they have family over to their homes, but they don't have um, friends. They meet their friends in bars and restaurants, and 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 they're, so they're very social that way. Uh, and all of that shut down. Uh, what two and a half weeks ago now, and um, so that's been a struggle. I think by and large, people are doing quite well with that. They see the seriousness of the situation. One of the cool things I think it's going on in many places around the world, but very early on. Uh, I don't know whose idea it was, but somebody decided that eight o'clock every night, everyone's going to go to their window or if they have a terrace, they're going to go out on their terrace. And we're going to, we're going to applaud for a few minutes for the police and the nurses and the doctors and the uh, delivery people, uh, the people who are continuing to work uh, so that we can continue to live, um, but are exposing themselves to the virus. And so that's um, kind of a neat community thing that goes on. And uh, it's a little, it's a little funny. They live very busy lives, just like uh, Americans do. Um, as we're shut in our homes on the street where we live and we have a, we have a terrace and we see out on our street and we can see the other houses in the street. There are so many people who live on my street that I've never seen before because mm -hmm. now they're home all the time and we, we can see each other a little more and have brief conversations uh, um, that way. So um, it's, it's a big challenge. Uh, and uh, it's interesting to think how this would be if we didn't have all of the, uh, mobile and internet communications we have would be uh, even more difficult, I'm sure. With just about a minute left, how can we pray for and, and support you in uh, the work that the Lord has given you in Spain? Well, we give thanks every day for the prayers and support of, of the many, many people who, who support us here in the mission in Spain. Um, we would ask you to continue to do that. Uh, we would ask you to, to take care of yourselves and to uh, to love your neighbor by by being the best citizen you can in this situation. Um, and then remember, as we're trying to remember, that in the midst of, of crisis, that God's people are called to to show compassion, to love their neighbors, and and also to to seize those opportunities to confess Christ and to speak His His peace and and His love into whatever situations uh, the Lord places you. And that's not easy. That's not always uh, the most comfortable thing to do. Uh, neither in Spain nor in the United States, but uh, in these days, I think that's um, what the Lord has called us to do. The Reverend David Warner and Shelley serve the Lord through the LCMS in Spain. Thank you so much, Pastor Warner, for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today and sharing your story with us. Thank you, Andy, and thank you, Sarah, and the peace of Christ be with all of you. Amen. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. 